Anthony Davis, the unibrow, AD, whatever you'd like to call him, an otherworldly talented basketball player of the New Orleans Pelicans, his agent, Rich Paul, who, by the way, also LeBron's agent, told Adrian Wojnarowski, and we will have him on in the 5 o'clock hour, a Woj, we will, that he will not sign a contract at the end of this deal. So it behooves the Pelicans to trade him. So now that opens up the dream portal for a lot of people. First, the Knicks. Yeah. Dream portal. What would you give up if you were the Knicks? And if I'm the Knicks, anything you want. That's how good this guy. I don't think he has any intention in playing with the Knicks, but the Knicks should do their due, due diligence. Right. And the most valuable item that they own is their draft pick. Right. Would you give up a potential number one draft pick for Anthony Davis? And I would in an eye blink, because as great as we think Zion Williamson will become, Anthony Davis is that great now. He's one of the top three players in the NBA, averages 28 and 12. If you could get Anthony Davis and make sure you're able to sign him, that well, first round draft pick, and even if you have to throw in Kevin Knox, I would do that too. But you have to make sure he's going to sign with you. Right. To get him as a rental and then he goes signs with the Lakers at the end of the season would be devastating. So you have to have a guarantee that the second the deal is done, you sign him to an extension, he becomes a Nick for the foreseeable future. Because if the Knicks finish with the worst record, they're guaranteed one of the top three picks. You can't give that up for a guy that's not going to be here long term. So I don't know how you get that done, how you get that kind of assurance, because everything seems to point to him wanting to play with LeBron James with the Lakers. Right. See, the Lakers can make that deal and know that they're going to sign him. The Knicks aren't going to know that, and if they're not going to be guaranteed that, I can't give up the pick. If I'm guaranteed that, I'd give up the pick, because you're right, I don't know if any of these guys can turn out to be half the player that Davis is. Now, the interesting thing is the gamble aspect of it, because teams have gambled in the past and won, one of them being the Oklahoma City Thunder. They gave up a lot. To get um, Paul George a lot. And everybody thought that Paul George was definitely going to go to the Lakers. He ended up signing a max extension after one year he liked being in Oklahoma City so much. Toronto Raptors, they're doing the exact thing. Everybody expects Kawhi Leonard to sign in L.A. They gave up DeMar DeRozan amongst others to get him for one year and convince him this is the place to be. Now, if I'm the Knicks, I would not give up that first pick on a prayer. I just wouldn't. I'd have to have some assurances. Now, let's take the Knicks out of it. The Celtics probably have more capital to give New Orleans than any other team. I mean, they, they could trade Jason Tatum. They could trade any of their great young players. And it would be a great package for New Orleans. Would you do it? And they can't make that trade unless they trade Kyrie Irving back to New Orleans because there's a, a contract clause or a CBA clause that says you can't trade one guy who's due a max extension and you could, you know, above the bird right. rights for another guy. They, they can't both be on the same team at the same time. So the only way the Celtics could get him is at the end of this year after they sign Kyrie. But right now, before he signed, they can't do it. So that, that kind of leaves the Celtics out of it right now, unless Kyrie is in that deal. And finally, you've got the L.A. Lakers. Now, you would say that L.A. probably has leverage, but they don't. Because if they want him now and not waste another year of LeBron James, you're going to have to give up a Kuzma. You're going to have to give up an Ingram. You're going to have to give up great players. You're going to have to give up a ball. You're going to have to give up draft picks, which wouldn't be worth that much if it was LeBron and if it was, in fact, um, Anthony Davis on the same team. That, that pick would probably be 27, 28, 29. It wouldn't be a real great first-round pick. Um, you know, reading the tea leaves, it would probably be the Lakers, but would they be willing to give up all that capital? And that's why Stephen A. Smith said this earlier. And it makes a lot of sense. If, in fact, the Lakers were able to get Paul George like they thought they would, they would have been able to have George, LeBron, and all of the good young players they have on their, on their roster. But by missing out on George, which they thought was a sure thing, 
that cost them keeping all of their players. Because if you want to get Davis before he becomes a free agent, because if you wait until he becomes a free agent with the Pelicans, that's two years of the four years that LeBron has signed on for. Right. And all of a sudden, he's a 35, 36-year-old player. And really, are you in the wheelhouse of him winning a championship? That's why if L.A. really wants him, they might have to give up all those players. He's not that old, is he? Who? How old Anthony Davis? No, no, I'm saying LeBron. Oh, LeBron's already said. Okay, thank you. Oh, the idea is He's to not get... already 35 years old? No, he's 34, right? That's impossible. Can LeBron get older, please? It doesn't even make sense. You know, I, you, you could wait till he's a free agent and get him for nothing except the money, but as you said, you're wasting two more years of LeBron James. Right. So I would think they'd, they'd want to be in on him, and they know that they're going to have him for the two years plus beyond because he'll sign there eventually because he wants to be a Laker. Who else could be involved? You said the Celtics. That codicil has probably knocked them out of it. If the, unless they trade Kyrie too. And the Knicks. Can, why? Why would Davis get? Why would Davis not want to at least test the free agent? Would he just? He, he wouldn't. I wouldn't think he would sign right away, getting traded to the Knicks. Would he want to check it out, play there? What can he do between if they traded for him today and the rest of the season to convince him to stay? I don't know if the Knicks can get the guarantee that he would sign long term with them. Probably not. And and since. You know, his agent is LeBron's agent. It makes you wonder. Now, he has come out and said it is not about money. It's about the ability to win. Right. Because he's eligible at the end of this year for a five-year, $240 million extension. And I used to always say baseball was the way to go. Nobody's making $50 million a year in baseball. No. The big stars in basketball are now making in the high 40s. So they are taking care of their superstars. And in baseball, Harper and Machado still don't have a job. So it tells you that basketball is looked at a little differently than any of our Well, it's sport. looked about differently because having that one great player can get you into the playoffs every year and make a run for a championship. But for some reason in New Orleans, it hasn't. He's been there. He's been great. He's one of the best players this year, and they're the third worst team in the West. Usually when you have a player play at that level, you're at least a playoff team. So what's going on there? They can't seem to get any traction with this great player. Nobody wants to play with him? Is are they that mismanaged that they can't put together a championship run with this kind of player? And, and it's interesting in L.A., do you want to give up all that draft capital to get A.D., or do you want to gamble that Kevin Durant or Kawhi Leonard comes? Because they might not. They might go to L.A. Clippers, not L.A. Mm. Lakers. So there's a lot of intrigue there, and I know a lot of Knicks fans will be excited, but... I don't think the Knicks have a chance of getting him. And, and if they do, I don't think they have a chance of, of getting him to commit to a long-term extension. Now, if he was going to commit to a long-term extension, anybody they want. Porzingis, yeah, really. yep. Yeah. First-round draft pick, yep. Knox, yep. Anybody. Anybody. He's better than everybody. He's better than your wildest dreams of what Porzingis can become. Uh, yeah, I think it's wildest. Do you think he's better than yeah. the wildest dreams? He's better than the wildest dreams. Don't you think dreams? he is the wildest dream of what Porzingis can become? And that's fair. I don't, I don't know. It, I think it, he's better than what Porzingis can become. I, I think I think you're probably right that he will eventually. That That is what would happen. But one quick note, though, in terms of their level of success. Being third out of the playoffs, or being third from the bottom um, in the East, is the Bulls at 11-39. Okay, mm -hmm. so before we bury him too bad, being having a terrible year, being third from the bottom in the West, he's willed the team to 22 and 28. All right. So they win basketball games. This is not a team that's garbage. They're, it, the West is much more competitive than the East. And if Boogie didn't get hurt last year, this whole story might change. Because exactly. he would have gotten a long extension and Davis might have stayed. But the idea is to try to get Davis to play with someone. You know, so you probably would like to hold on to poor Zinga so you can get those two together. You don't want to all of a sudden make New York into New Orleans where you've got this great player and he doesn't have anybody to play with and then you're missing the playoffs or barely making the playoffs. No. I would give up the first round pick but when you say you give up everything, Michael, I gotta have somebody to play with him. Are we gonna play a Yeah, Knox I'd give up. I I get that, but I'd like to be able to keep Porzingis to play with either whoever I draft or if I can go out and get Anthony Davis. But if you had to give up Porzingis you would. But then I'm holding on the Knox then. Like, I'm not going to give them the first-round pick, Knox and Porzingis. Right. No, then you have no, nothing then, again. You know, then I have nothing. Except one really good player. Then, I, then I'm New Orleans. Then I'm the Pelicans. I'm the Pelicans North. Here's Brian Windhorst. Done. He was on Get Up. And he said, opposite of what we're saying, he believes the Knicks are true contenders for Davis. 
If I am the New York Knicks, I am convening a meeting this morning. Anthony Davis has some interest in playing for the Knicks. It's not Lakers or bust, although this is absolutely aimed at trying to get the Lakers the first crack. The New York Knicks need to decide whether they would be willing to make their number one pick unprotected this year available. If they would, I believe they can put together a competitive offer that would help the Pelicans do a rebuild, and they could get their hands on Anthony Davis in the next 10 days. He would be a huge decision, but I think New York would be one of the few teams Anthony Davis would be willing to sign an extension with. So they are sort of the quiet lurker here. Yeah, the Lakers are going to make their offer, but boy, I think the Knicks are in the game. Well, first, first of all, two things I can hear. Windhorse wearing an undershirt there. And second of all, that is... Think about how quickly the season would change. If all of a sudden, instead of waiting for next year to see a draft pick, you're getting a look at the future of your team right now. But you know what would stink for New Orleans? If you send Anthony Davis before the trade, they, they start winning right, a little gonna, bit. They're, they're not going to have the third, three, you know, bottom three record. They're not going to have a 14% chance of getting that so, first pick. So you may as well just hold on to That's a great point. Yeah. That's a great Because point. if you hold on to him to the end of the year, then the Celtics are in play with all of their draft capital. The Knicks are in play. You know exactly where the draft pick is. And um, I, the, only, the only way I would trade him before February 8th, I think, would be to the Lakers if you can hold them up. They're, they're not under any pressure because they have him for next year, too. So his agent's just giving them the opportunity to get something for him now. You probably could get more for him now mm -hmm. than you could during the summer. But I think you could get a lot for him for, during the summer, too. Yeah, and even even with the Knicks deal, like you said, just wait, see how good that pick looks. Yeah, unless he goes on record and says, "I will sign with the Knicks." The second I get de dealt there, I'll sign an extension. Then you probably no, 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 no. I'm saying this, but Pelicans for the Pelicans, do it. They can't do it because once he because joins if you the give Knicks, up right, that no, first no, round draft that. pick, that, yeah. that pick's not going to be worth this much. Pelicans are sitting back saying, so they should wait until the end of the season. So this, they'd be silly to trade them. Well, the deadline is, you said, February 8th. Actually, yep. the deadline is before the All-Star game, which is weird. So there's, there's five god-awful teams in the league right now. You have to think that if the Knicks were to get him, to get Anthony Davis, they instantly probably would end up being sixth. Not this year. No, if they got him this year, they'd end up being sixth, the sixth worst team. Oh, okay. Maybe the seventh worst team. Right. Which is a totally different ballgame. And, and then you, if you have Anthony Davis... And whatever you can retain after the trade, that is a great come on for any free agent. Maybe Kawhi wants to play with them. And it's, it would wouldn't it be? I mean, it's like uh, it would be the re, it could be the beginning of something. You get someone of that quality, and you can't really. Um, I'll say throw that, out the Nets either. What would they give up? I mean, their young talent is not as um, sexy. But they've got good players. They can give up people. And they've got their own draft pick mm. this year. It's interesting looking at the standings, right? Phoenix has 11 wins. Memphis has 20, right? So that's too big of a gap. Cleveland 10, New York 10, Chicago 11, then Atlanta 15, Orlando 20. I'm not sure even with Anthony Davis that you're going to play well enough to catch up to, 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 catch Orlando? Up to Orlando. So you're going to catch one, Atlanta. Two, three, right. four, Five, you're probably still going to end up with the, in the, in the top five, but that's not that's not getting. But so what percentage? That's you, not getting Zion. That's not getting RJ Barrett. Number, but, that's but, not but, getting one of the, the superstars. But from a lottery standpoint, what's the difference between the worst team and the fifth worst team? You got to get in, into what the worst four, three, worst three, worst three. Well, the worst three is what you're looking at. You still could do that Maybe. with Anthony Davis. I don't know. I don't know. Well, if you if you really try, if you're Fisdale and Fisdale coaches to lose these games. But why would you coach to lose those games if you had yeah, any you know, games? Well, you're not going to care. Pick. Right. Knights want to play well. Knights yeah, want to put together a team. Yeah, so you're, what you're doing is you're thinking, Let's uh, start. so the Pelicans would have to bank on, do I still think the Knicks could finish right. with a top three worst record if they've got Anthony Davis? Right. Because you're right, and Fisdale's going to want to coach to win.